WCW NWO Halloween Havoc 98, the 10th Halloween Havoc event, took place in the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas on the 25th of October. Around 10,500 fans are in the arena and we've got around 310,000 fans watching at home on pay-per-view. This is lower than Halloween Havoc 1997. Our main event features DDP getting a world title shot against the undefeated Bill Goldberg. And we've got a ton of featured bouts at this event including Hollywood Hogan vs The Warrior, Bret Hart vs Sting and Kevin Nash vs Scott Hall. The undercard's quite healthy too so let's take another look at Halloween Havoc 98 and let's see what happened. Oh by the way, one of the best entrance setups in wrestling history right here. That gigantic demon looked absolutely fantastic. 10 out of 10 already for presentation. The Nitro Girls are at Halloween Havoc, the first pay-per-view they've ever been featured on, which is quite surprising actually, seeing as they've been part of WCW for quite some time. I know people complain about these dance routines in the middle of wrestling shows and for the record, I don't really think it's that big of a deal. I will say though that pay-per-view time is invaluable and maybe it could have been spent elsewhere. By all means, break up Nitro a little and use the Nitro Girls during segues and what have you, but on pay-per-view, I'd maybe think twice. WCW you're gonna learn this the hard way a bit later on. Mean Gene interviews Rick Steiner and Rick says it's not brother versus brother tonight when the dog-faced gremlin faces Scott Steiner, it's just Rick Steiner against another opponent. Buff Bagwell shows up and he too says he's really tired of Scott Steiner. Buff warns Rick that the NWO don't work on a one versus one basis so tonight Buff Daddy wants to stand in Rick's corner and watch his back. Rick says he's not sure if he can trust Buff. Buff says look in my eyes, he's done with Scott and he's done with the NWO and when Rick agrees to let Buff back him up later on, the crowd boo. They and I think everyone in the world knows what's gonna happen. Our first match is a rematch from Nitro a few weeks ago, it's Raven vs TV Champion Chris Jericho. Raven hasn't been himself since the flock broke up and he's still troubled here at Halloween Havoc. He says he's on a losing streak but it's not his fault, he's a victim of circumstances out of his control. He wasn't even told in good time tonight that he'd be wrestling Chris Jericho on pay per view, so Raven says he's not competing and he's gonna go home. Jericho says that he doesn't want to be here either so he's not too bothered. The thing is though, the Jericho Holics paid to see Chris Jericho. Jericho equals buy rates and Jericho equals rock and roll baby. Chris baits Raven back in the ring when he says Raven hasn't got what it takes anymore and Raven's a loser and Jericho beats the crap out of Raven as the bell rings. A clothesline puts Raven down and Chris puts one foot on the former leader of the flock but Raven kicks out. Raven then sends Jericho out of the ring and the steel steps come into play when Jericho takes a front suplex. Raven then runs up the steps and Chris takes a drop kick and when it gets back in the ring, Raven wastes too much time posing to the crowd. The same thing he did back in that Nitro match. Chris is able to drop Raven on the top rope, he then pulls off a springboard drop kick but his dive from the apron to the outside completely misses. Still, Jericho is able to throw Raven into the guardrail and no one took these bumps better than Raven. Back in the ring, Raven begins fighting dirty by raking and biting Jericho's face. Raven's then able to apply a sleeper that ends up getting countered. Chris then exposes the top turnbuckle but his plan backfires after Raven hits a pop up powerbomb followed by a slingshot. Chris's head smacks the exposed metal and Raven hits a clothesline. The crowd's actually behind Raven now as he pulls off a belly to belly after dodging a kick but Chris is still able to lock in the lion tamer and Raven has to crawl to the bottom rope. When the two get up, Raven hits the even flow and Jericho kicks out. Not sure if we have ever seen that before on Nitro and pay per views at least, but Jericho kicks out. He hits a low blow followed by a German suplex. And when Chris Canyon runs down to help his friend, Jericho bumps into Canyon and Raven sets up another even flow. Jericho counters and Raven instantly tops out to the Lion Tamer. A good opener, but I would have preferred these two wrestling without the Raven storyline going on in the background. His recent matches are all about how he's losing his way and this of course feeds into his matches and performances on TV. Hollywood Hogan and Eric Bischoff come out to say a whole load of nothing. We have quite a few promos on this show tonight along with the aforementioned Nitro Girl routines, so yeah keep that in mind. Hogan reminds fans that he attacked his own nephew on Nitro this past Monday. Fans at home get treated to a replay and congrats, you now know that this is gonna feed into tonight's Hogan vs Warrior match somehow. They wouldn't show this for nothing, especially during a WCW pay-per-view. 
Hogan says Warrior's going to get beaten up real bad. Hogan's a visionary of the cutting edge. NWO for life, too sweet. Raph then took on Meng in a one-on-one -on -one grudge match. Raph's been on a roll recently since the whole Glacier Blood Runs Cold stuff came to an end, and the man has been absolutely unbeatable. Meng's definitely his biggest challenge yet. The man called Ming doesn't want Raph to get in the ring, so Raph pulls him out and Ming gets decimated on the outside. Raph performs an apron sent on before the match can officially start, and the Minger then shows that he fears no top turnbuckle pad, for whatever reason. Raph's clothesline has no effect, but his diving clothesline certainly does. Ming avoids a meltdown attempt before nailing the big man with a standing sidekick, and Raph then takes a backbreaker. Raph tries to wear Ming down in the corner, but Ming comes back with a back suplex, a corner clothesline, Line and an atomic drop, but Wrath replies with the death penalty, and then we see the meltdown. Wrath wins at Halloween Havoc in a match that I honestly had higher hopes for. The meltdown did look awesome, though. Wrath has some scary strength. Disco Inferno takes on Juventud Guerrera next. The winner goes on to face Billy Kidman later for the Cruiserweight title. Disco refers to Guerrera as Hooven Stooge, saying as Guerrera complained about Disco lying about his weight. Guerrera thinks that Disco shouldn't be allowed to compete for the Cruiserweight belt, but that won't matter if Hoovy can beat the Inferno tonight at Halloween Havoc. Disco got a bit cocky at the opening bell, but a few knife edge chops puts the Inferno in his place. Hoovy wanted to go up and over with a hip toss counter, and well, this happened. The crowd booed when they went for the spot again, only this time Hoovy planted Disco with a Famouser. But to be fair, they got the crowd back into it when Disco got monkey flipped out of the ring and Hoovy followed up with a unique head scissors takedown. Back in the ring, Hoovy takes an inverted atomic drop, a clothesline and a second rope elbow drop from the Disco Inferno. I don't want to hear any more talk about Disco being a bad wrestler because there's a sweet chin lock right there. Hoovy gets all fired up with a jump heel kick and Disco gets dropped over the top rope. Guerrera then wipes Disco out with a plancha, and back in the ring, Guerrera keeps the pace up with a Hurricane Rana. Unfortunately for Hoovy, Disco's not about to give up just yet. Hoovy gets dropped on the top rope and he takes a swinging neckbreaker. When Hoovy tries a sunset flip, Disco pulls out the Macarena. Y yeah. He then pulls off a giant swing that makes him so dizzy that he ends up falling on Hoovy's nutsack. But all this gives Disco enough confidence to go up to the top rope again to try a high risk aerial attack. Unfortunately, Hoovy smashes the Inferno Inferno's disco balls on the top turnbuckle. Disco takes a Frankensteiner, Hoovy then pulls off a diving wheel kick, but Disco Inferno kicks out at two. The match comes to an end when Hoovy pulls off a bulldog. He sizes Disco up for a reverse Hurricane Rana perhaps, but Disco counters and we see a pile driver. The pile driver's enough to put Hoovy away, and Disco's gonna face Billy Kidman a little later on. Not bad, not bad at all. Actually kinda shocked to see Hoovy lose clean, but the match itself was fine. Scott Steiner comes out and he ends up completely changing his scheduled match with brother Rick tonight. Scott says Rick can team up with Buff and Scott can team up with the Giant. The tag titles will be on the line even though the champs are Scott Hall and the Giant. JJ Dillon's been trying to book Rick vs Scott for a very long time. Dillon does seem happy to put the tag titles up for grabs tonight, but he also says if Scott and the Giant lose, then Scott will have to face his brother tonight in the middle of the ring after the tag team match. Scotty's pretty confident, so he agrees to this stipulation. The only thing scary about this Halloween is the monster inside Alex's pants. Dude. Oh, big black ones. WCW have been presenting this feud with the company's top European stars, Fit Finlay, Alex Wright and Davey Boy Smith. I have no doubt in my mind that this next contest was supposed to be a triple threat match, but Davey's finished up with WCW. He wrestled Ming on WCW Saturday night, a match that would air the night before Halloween Havoc. The Bulldog needed treatment for a spinal infection thanks to that trap door incident at Fall Brawl 1998, and WCW would end up terminating his contract due to his inability to perform form. This, however, isn't the end for Davy Boy and reliving the war, so please hold back your tears. 
we have Fit Finley versus Alex Wright then, and look at Alex bounce up and down before delivering a top rope wrist lock takedown. What a guy, what a fucking guy. Finley's offense isn't as flashy, but it sure is effective. Finley drops an E on Alex in the two trade European uppercuts, and Alex ends up getting the better of Finley in this little exchange. The crowd chant boring as Alex drops Finley on the top rope, so add Las Vegas is another city who don't know what top tier wrestling is when they see it. Finley tries to excite fans with his stretch right here and yeah, that didn't work. On the outside, Finley takes a body slam and an elbow drop as Wunderkin gets dropped on the guardrail, the two get back in for a little more action and they tumble out again when Alex tries a crossbody. It's a tough crowd here tonight folks, they aren't enjoying this one at all. Finley walks away when Alex goes for a missile dropkick, I don't know why other wrestlers don't bother doing this. Finley misses a corner charge Road Warrior Hawk style, Alex delivers a neckbreaker and he wins, he gets the pinfall victory after a neckbreaker. So I guess that settles it, Alex Wright's the greatest wrestler in Europe then, now and forever. As much as I want to say this was a good match, it wasn't, it was very average. You see this kind of match every week on Nitro. Speaking of matches that you can see on Nitro, Lodi and Perry Saturn have a match next. Dave Penzer says this is a special added match, which is hilarious when you remember what happens at the end of this pay per view, but more on that soon. Lodi looks completely stoned to the bone tonight. The green in Las Vegas must be of particularly high quality. Saturn? Uh, yeah, the green in Las Vegas must be of particularly high quality. Apparently, the beret represents Saturn's time with the Army Rangers, so there you go. Lodi did absolutely nothing in this match except run away to retrieve his signs from a ringside assistant. He tries to leave again, seeing as Perry's beating the shit out of him, and it ends with a Falcon Arrow and a Death Valley Driver from Perry Saturn. Perry deserved a lot better than this after that barn burner he had with Raven back at Fall Brawl. Disco Inferno gets his cruiserweight title shot next and I would have booked this one a little later in the show to be honest. I don't think enough time's passed since Disco vs Hoovy, but here we are. Even Tony Schiavone makes mention of this. Kidman's been tearing it up recently on Nitro and while Hoovy and Disco wasn't that bad, I fully expect Kidman to elevate this match a little higher. Disco eats a dropkick at the opening bell and he goes down following a drop toe hold. Kidman applies an armbar and Disco is able to throw Kidman to the mat a few times while applying a wrist lock, though it doesn't take long for Kidman to get a little payback. Kidman ends up on the apron and we see his vaulting head scissor takedown, Disco gets the shit kicked out of him for merely existing, and Kidman pays by taking a drop to a hold on the bottom rope, a swinging neck breaker and a hammer throw into the corner. Disco trolls Kidman a bit by pretending to be his mother, a natural born heat magnet ladies and gents. Kidman does stay focused though and Kidman goes flying out of the ring. Kidman comes back by using the ring steps for a tornado bulldog. The champ looks to end it with a big splash but Disco moves out of the way. The Inferno then applies a chin lock and Kidman didn't like this too much, so the Inferno gets wiped out with a clothesline. Still, Disco isn't down yet, he looks a little tired after launching Kidman high into the air but he's got a smile on his face. Disco stomps a hole in Kidman's chest but the thing about Disco Inferno is, he always has to pose and he always ends up paying for it too, this time is no exception. He hits a back suplex, he trash talks Kidman, he delivers a body slam and he fails to land a middle rope elbow because he was too busy dancing. Kidman fires back with a sit out spine buster and a par slam, Disco then avoids a drop kick and Billy's unable to perform his usual face buster counter. Instead, Disco pulls off the same pile driver that defeated Juventud Guerrera earlier in the night and Kidman kicks out at two. Disco thought he had it and so did many fans within the MGM Grand Garden. The Inferno then counters the Tornado DDT by dropping Kidman on his back. The Inferno then pulls off a front suplex, but Kidman kicks out again. It ends when Disco tries the pile driver one more time, but this time around Kidman pulls off the face buster counter. We then see the shooting star press and Kidman wins. It was a valiant effort from Disco and he had two decent matches here, but he couldn't get the job done unfortunately and Kidman leaves as cruiserweight champion. Decent, definitely above average, but nothing super exciting. 
Well, it's time for the tag team match. Scott Steiner and the Giant versus Rick Steiner and Buff Bagwell. If Rick and Buff win, then Rick and Buff win the tag team titles and then Rick gets a singles match against Scott. You can see what's going to happen from a mile off. If you can't smell an NWO trap by this point, then I really don't know what to say. This is Bagwell's first match back since his injury. He's going to stay on the apron though to start things off and Rick's going to try his luck against the Giant. The big man takes control early on and Rick gets floored. Jan performs an atomic drop and Scott tells the Jan to stay in the ring and soften Rick up a bit more. So the dogface gremlin takes a back suplex and Scott's going to come in when Rick's down and out. Scott viciously beats his brother while Charles Robinson tries to restore some order. Rick gets punched and kicked in the head before getting sent out of the ring. The giant headbutts Rick and Buff runs over to shove the big man. But the beating of Rick continues when Scott chokes him out on the middle rope. Finally, Scott slips up when he misses a clothesline and Rick goes on offense. Scott gets pummeled on the mat and pummeled in the corner. He tries to fight back with an inverted atomic drop, but Rick no sells it and Scott gets put down again. Rick performs an elbow drop, he covers Scott, but Buff Bagwell wants tagged in. Rick could have won the match, but Buff really wants to get his hands on Scott. So Bagwell comes in, he and Rick go for a double clothesline and absolutely no one surprised when Buff turns on his partner. It was another big NWO setup. So Buff celebrates, he heads back up the ramp and Rick's left to fight two guys all on his own. Rick gets choked out again on the bottom rope, he gets body slammed, Jan comes in and he punches Rick in the face before standing on the elder Steiner. And on the outside, Scott attacks his brother at the guardrail. After a Russian leg sweep, the Jan covers Rick and the big man toys around by breaking the cover up a few times. When Scott comes back in, Rick tries to fight back but Scott hits a low blow and it appears that Rick has no chance. The NW are just having fun now. The Jan goes to the top rope for a missile dropkick and the crowd make a lot of noise when Rick moves out of the way and Scott gets taken out. Rick then hits a few Steiner lines on the Jan and he's able to pull off the Steiner Bulldog. 1, 2, 3, Rick Steiner pins the Jan and Rick Steiner now possesses the WCW Tag Team Championships. Remember, Rick's now also earned the right to face Scott one on one and even though the Jan tries to help Scott out, Rick is not about to let his brother walk away. After getting his head rammed into the ring steps, Scott ends up back in the ring. He pleads for his brother to think about what he's about to do, but Scott gets punched in the head and Rick pulls off a big old Steiner line. This is the loudest the crowd's been all night. Scotty gets slammed into the corner and he has no choice but to hit his brother with another low blow. Rick's taken quite a few shots to the nuts tonight, hasn't he? Scott then suplexes his brother and Rick gets a receipt for that Steiner line moments ago, but Rick comes back with his scoop par slam. Just then, someone with a Bill Clinton mask jumps the guardrail and they attack security. Stevie Ray appears and he hands this guy his trusty slapjack. And not only does Rick Steiner take a smack, the referee gets hit pretty hard too. It's Buff Bagwell. Bagwell's back down to do more damage and it looks like he may have just secured a victory for Scott. Bagwell grabs the referee's hand to slap the mat for the 1 2 3, but he only reaches 2. He tells Scott to give his brother the Frankensteiner and Scott pulls off his signature move. Buff tries again, but again Rick kicks out. So Buff decides to throw Charles Robinson out of the ring and the NWO guys go for a double clothesline. Rick ducks out of the way, Scott gets nailed and Buff misses a wild punch. This leads to Rick dropping Buff Daddy on the top rope. The match ends with another Steiner Bulldog from Rick. The dogface gremlin covers his brother and Nick Patrick dashes down to count the pinfall. It was a bloated affair for sure, too much going on. And I really want to see a standard no nonsense Rick vs Scott match with no bullshit. But the crowd enjoyed it in Las Vegas so maybe I'm being too picky. Still, Buff turning on Rick was very predictable and it's a shame a lot of focus was put on the swerve instead of the actual match. We have Scott Hall vs Kevin Nash next and just like Rick vs Scott, I would have preferred the storyline left out of this one. As a matter of fact, I didn't really want to see the outsiders ever breaking up at all, at least not this early. But we have Scott Hall who can't get his drinking under control versus his old friend who's resorted to beating some sense into the bad guy. Or at least that's what Kevin's gonna try tonight. It goes without saying, this should have been huge. Hall vs Nash could have been a really big deal in WCW, yet it doesn't feel big at Halloween Havoc 98. The storyline's miserable and the breakup happened way too early. 
Anyway, the two get in the ring and Scott throws his drink in Nash's face. I have no idea what Scott was drinking, but it must have been some strong stuff because Nash is blinded and Big Sexy can't fight back. The two end up on the outside where Nash takes a guardrail bump and Scott chokes his old friend with some cord he found lying at ringside. Scott then nails Kevin with one of those brilliant working punches and the bad guy leaves Kevin on the entranceway before getting back inside the ropes. Scott wants a microphone, he wonders if Nash's eyes are burning and he wonders how the world looks right now through Nash's foggy eyes. Scott tells Nash to leave, it's over, but Kev gets back in and Scott goes on the attack with more right hands. Hall lays Kev out with a big discus punch and the crowd chant Wolfpack as Hall delivers a body slam. Scott then says it's time for the outsider's edge but Big Sexy pushes his friend away. What follows next is Scott pummeling Nash in the corner over and over again. Again, Nash manages to push Scott away but Scott keeps coming back. Nash wants to take everything his friend has, almost like he wants Scott to get it all out of his system. And it's almost like Nash is refusing to fight back. Scott, meanwhile, shows no mercy. He begins toying and trash talking Nash, and finally, Kev has enough. Scott goes from corner to corner, and the bad guy gets hit with a sidewalk slam. The two struggle to get back up, so they start slugging it out while on their knees. They eventually do get back up, and Scott seems confused when Nash again refuses to fight back. But again, Kevin snaps out of it, and Hull goes down after a right hand. Nash then tries to put Scott away with a jackknife, and Scott gets out of the ring. We can see Nash has a busted lip as he tells Scott to get back inside the ropes. Paul slowly gets back in and he stares down his big buddy and the two lock up in the center of the ring. Nash overpowers Scott and it looks like Scott's now realizing he's in big trouble. Still, Scott remembers he's the bad guy. He again toys around with Kevin during an armbar, but Nash puts Scott down again and Scott's forced to look up at Big Kev. Scott then takes a few shots to the lower back. He punches Kev in the face one last time and now it's all Kevin Nash until the end of the bout. Scott Hall has no more left to give. Paul gets his head rammed into the canvas. He takes two leapfrog body guillotines. Nash puts Scott in the corner for a few knee strikes and Hall gets sized up for the big back elbow. In the opposite corner, Nash wants to know if Scott wants a double as he lays in more knee strikes and Nash then starts making fun of Scott as the bad guy gets destroyed. Bobby Heenan says Nash is just trying to beat sense into Scott as the bad guy struggles to get to his feet. There's no fight left in Scott at all. So Hall takes a big boot and Nash sets Scott up for a jackknife. Nash pulls off his signature move. He asks the fans if they want want to see it one more time. So Scott takes jackknife number two before Kev tells Scott to suck it and he leaves. Nash doesn't care about winning the match. Instead, Big Sexy walks away from his friend and he gets counted out. The match is officially over. Scott struggles to stand up after Big Nash leaves and that's it, that's how it ends. This match though wasn't that bad to be honest. When you consider Nash's performances in 1998 or lack thereof, then this one does come out pretty well in hindsight. And while I think I'd prefer a different angle going into the match, the two still did their best given the dog shit storyline they were in. I imagine folks who enjoyed the storyline would probably like the match a whole lot more, but it is kind of difficult trying to find people who enjoyed seeing Drunk Scott Hall on TV. Bret the Hitman Hart vs Sting The US title's up for grabs and this one's happening because Bret screwed Sting over by pretending to be his buddy for a few months. Sting's got a goatee, it looks weird with that face paint doesn't it? It doesn't matter anyway though because you're gonna get ready right now to say goodbye to the Wolfpack Sting because he's gonna take a break after this match. Sting was living a bit too fast and he developed a few bad habits over the past lot of months so he needed to go home, he needed to get better and he would end up finding Jesus, not even kidding. Bread is not eager to start the match at all. He walks around the outside, he gets in the ring, he gets back out again. Sting isn't in the mood tonight though it seems, so he eventually goes out to attack Bread. but no joke, there was around 3 minutes of time wasting here. Your average Nitro match doesn't last that long. Bread takes a few punches in the corner when the match gets in the ring followed by a clothesline. Hart takes a big right hand and he gets tossed into the corner. The Stinger performs an inverted atomic drop and the Hitman fights back with a few right hands of his own before raking Sting's eyes across the top rope. 
His Excellency pulls off a DDT, he rakes Sting's face in the corner, Bret pulls off a clothesline and he stops to listen to the fans chant Bret Hart sucks, and Hart then targets the lower back with punches and headbutts. After an elbow drop, the US champ applies a chin lock, though Sting's got a sick new goatee, and that's gonna help him defend against said chin lock. Sting fights out, but he ends up taking a knee strike followed by a running bulldog, and Sting gets punished for trying to roll the hitman up with a small cradle. Brett goes to the middle rope, he jumps off and Sting grabs the champ for a death lock. Brett reaches the ropes though and unlike this past week on Nitro, the Stinger actually lets go this time. Brett performs a leapfrog and he crumbles to the mat afterwards. The commentators think the leapfrogs caused Hart to get injured, but Brett's really putting on those brass knucks that don't look like brass knucks but we'll call them brass knucks anyway. He ends up dropping the black elastic band on the mat after a clothesline, but Billy Silverman sees it and he stops Sting from taking Brett out. This allows Brett to hit a low blow, and Brett goes back in the driver's seat with a backbreaker followed by the elbow drop from Brett's very own rope. It then goes to the outside where Brett continues to destroy Sting. Hart just can't understand why these fans don't like him. And right here's where our match ends, folks. Brett attacks Sting while the icon's on the apron. He's gonna do this a few times, and the referee's gonna take a bump when Sting hits him with a back elbow. Sting thought it was Brett, and Brett couldn't care less. So Billy also takes a leg drop from the head man. Inside the ring, Sting turns it around for just a moment. Brett goes down after a clothesline and Sting stops a Bret Hart aerial attack with a superplex. That could have been disastrous for the referee right there. And Sting ends up going for a stinger splash but he overshoots and he ends up smacking his head off the ring post, knocking himself out cold. To make sure Sting's done for, the hitman grabs the stinger's baseball bat and he lays in a few shots. If Sting wasn't knocked out, he most definitely is now. Brett jumps off the middle rope and Sting takes another shot. The hitman wakes the referee up and Brett applies the shot. Shooter. Sting's out, he can't answer, so Billy Silverman calls for the bell and Bret Hart defeats Sting on pay per view. The audience don't like the outcome as the hitman celebrates his big win. Sting hasn't moved a muscle though, and for the first time in a long time, it looks like Sting needs help. Medics come down to put the icon on a stretcher, and we see Sting getting brought back up the ramp and put in an ambulance. We won't be seeing the icon for a while folks as this storied part of his career comes to an end, but he'll be back soon and when he does return he won't be associated with the new world order. The match itself though was very average, you expect more from these two. Warrior vs Hogan is our semi main event and this is a match that lives on in infamy. Many call it the worst pay per view match in WCW history. Hogan's been bragging about his position in the world of wrestling, calling himself a wrestling god. But the Warrior showed up to WCW television to remind Hollywood that Hulkamania failed to overcome the power of the Warrior. Warrior beat Hogan before and he wants to do it again in WCW. In contrast to Hogan's NWO, the Warrior introduced the One Warrior Nation. It was more of a philosophy than an actual group. And the One Warrior Nation was all about being true to yourself, not following the path of darkness that Hogan travelled down. And it was also about getting Ed Leslie high as a kite and smoking a lot of green. Basically, it was a load of nothing. We got disappearing acts on Nitro, two way magic mirrors, the freak Hollywood Hogan out, loads of thick clouds filling up wrestling rings, and it all leads us to Halloween Havoc, the Mania 6 rematch. Hulk Hogan vs. The Warrior, one more time. Just in case you forgot, we see another clip of Hogan attacking his nephew Horace on Nitro during Hollywood's entrance. The warrior gets a decent reaction on his way to the ring, and like Bret Hart earlier, Hulk's gonna take his time before stepping inside the ropes. When the two get in the ring, Hogan takes a big right hand and he gets knocked on his ass. So he gets up, he wastes a little more time, he gets the better warrior after the initial lockup and the two then trade wrist locks. Hogan goes back to the outside following a shoulder block. After a bit more stalling, Warrior wants to recreate the WrestleMania 6 test of strength and Hogan's like nah. So Hulk fights dirty in the corner, he softens Warrior up, and then we go through the test of strength. You can go and grab a drink right here and take a toilet break, when you come back Warrior's still gonna be struggling to get to his feet. Warrior does get up, they trade wrist locks again, we see some crisscross action that felt a bit out of place. 
and it ends with Hogan body slamming Warrior and Warrior no sells it. Warrior performs a body slam of his own before feeling the power at the ring ropes. Hogan then gets clotheslined out of the ring and look, Hogan has to tell Warrior to come outside to continue the match. Outside the ring, Hogan's able to scratch Warrior's eyes but Hollywood ends up getting rammed into the ring post. There's a referee bump back inside the ropes when Hogan shoulder blocks Nick Patrick and Hulk makes sure that Patrick's out by dropping a knee on Nick's face. Hogan then calls the giant of the ring, the big man gets in there but he ends up booting Hulk Hogan by accident, and Warrior is then able to take care of Stevie Ray and Vincent with ease. Warrior covers Hulk, Patrick's still out, and when Warrior checks on the referee, he ends up taking a back suplex. After Warrior kicks out of the follow up cover, Hollywood decides to choke him out at the ropes before the weight belt comes off. Warrior gets whipped, he gets choked again, Nick Patrick tries to stop Hogan and Hollywood eventually relents. The belt goes back on, Warrior gets his face stretched out, Hogan performs a body slam and then Warrior rolls around the ring to avoid a few Hogan elbow drops. The bit where Warrior rolls into Hogan and Hogan trips up is extra comical. Warrior knocks Hogan down again and he misses his running splash. The two get to their feet and they stumble through more strikes before Warrior takes Hogan's belt. Hogan gets whipped a few times and again, Nick Patrick, master negotiator, is able to make a wrestler put down an illegal object. Speaking of illegal objects, here's where Hulk Hogan tries to light some flash paper and he completely botches it. I'm sure you've seen this before but my god, what a blunder. It's hard to find another wrestling match that progressively gets worse with each passing minute. Warrior performs two double axe handles before taking a low blow. Hogan then performs a leg drop but he doesn't pin Warrior for some reason. Instead he looks out to the entranceway and he sees his nephew Horace. Didn't see that one coming folks. Warrior begins feeling the power in the ring, he's getting all fired up after a few clotheslines, but no one cares. Hogan goes down, Bischoff distracts Nick Patrick and Horace ends up hitting Warrior with a steel chair. Hogan pins Warrior and revenge for WrestleMania 6 has been achieved. Hogan said Horace just passed the test, Horace is NWO for life and Horace Hogan pours ladder fluid over Warrior before Doug Dillinger runs in to get some order. Brutal, it's fucking brutal. A match that manages to fall below the worst expectations possible and a match that deserves all the criticism it gets. Hogan actually blamed himself for this one, Hogan took the blame for stinking up the MGM Grand Garden at Halloween Havoc and Warrior famously said that somehow he had the best match of his career against Hulk Hogan while also having the worst match of his career against Hulk Hogan. Our next match is the World Heavyweight Championship main event, Diamond Dallas Page vs Goldberg. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! And this is what happened to around 20% of homes who bought Halloween Havoc on pay per view. The show had went on for too long and pay per view providers across the country switched the feed off before the main event even aired. It's an absolute crisis right here and one that could have been easily avoided had WCW not bothered with the excessive promos at this show along with the 4 Nitro Girl dance routines and that Saturn vs Lodi match. The whole thing made the company look like absolute amateurs and it also cost the company a lot of money and refunds. Apparently WCW offered a $5 rebate for affected homes while many viewers weren't happy with that, so they pushed ahead and got refunded the full amount for the event. It's baffling how this could happen, but let's check out the main event anyway. Page won the right to face Goldberg by winning the war games match at Fall Brawl, so let's see if he can end the streak tonight at Halloween Havoc. The referee gets shoved away while the two men stare each other down. Page then then rushes into Goldberg three times but each time he gets shoved back into the corner. Page has a lot of heart but he may not have the strength to overcome Bill Goldberg. Page catches Goldberg out with an arm drag and Goldberg sees red. The two have a strong lockup that sees both men tumble to the outside and Mickey J jumps between the two to break things up. A very tense start to this world title match. Back in the ring, Goldberg performs a top wrist lock counter. He avoids the first leg sweep attempt but not the second. DDP gets up in Goldberg's face and he pays for it with a few strikes followed by a fireman's carry takedown. 
and Goldberg tries to put Dallas away with an armbar but DDP stays in it. Dallas performs a jawbreaker, he then tries to soften up the shoulder, Dallas then goes for a diamond cutter and Goldberg throws DDP out of the ring. DDP realizes he's in for a fight tonight as he walks around the ring, he gets back inside and he's able to counter Goldberg's wrist lock by hitting the mat and moving into a hammer lock, but again Goldberg sends Dallas out of the ring. This time Paige manages to snap Goldberg's neck over the top rope, he then performs a neck breaker and Goldberg goes down again following a Russian leg sweep. Dallas is working his ass off already and it's so apparent. He takes a quick break with a front face lock on the mat and Goldberg replies with his signature neck breaker followed by a headlock suplex. We then see a sidewalk slam from Goldberg and give Bill credit here too, he's changing it up for this one and it's definitely paying off. DDP finds himself in another arm submission but he makes it to the ropes. He then pulls off a head scissor takedown and when Goldberg tries to reply with a sidekick and a corner charge, Dallas moves out of the way. The crowd pops here because this does look like a turning point and Goldberg does look hurt, but DDP's tired and he's unable to capitalize right away. Still, DDP nails Goldberg with a springboard clothesline followed by a great looking DDT and paid signals for the cutter. The crowd rise to their feet as they think the streak's about to end but Goldberg pulls off a spear, a spear that sees Goldberg drill his own head into the canvas. The champ was confused here, he knocked himself out for a second, but Goldberg's a tough customer and he's able to get back up, he struggles to get Paige up for the jackhammer and when Dallas counters with a diamond cutter the roof comes off the MGM. Slowly Paige crawls over to Goldberg and he only gets a 2. The fans thought Paige had a great chance here but all hopes lost when Goldberg counters a suplex with the jackhammer. Goldberg defeats DDP and it was a good match between these two. It's a Goldberg match that actually felt like it belonged in the main event and that says a lot. Mike Tenay says this victory brings Goldberg to 155-0, but it's only 147-0. Goldberg only had two matches since the last episode of Nitro, one against Ming and another against Scott Hall. You kinda feel bad for WCW after all the hype they put into this show, it was heavily promoted on Nitro with a lot of pre-tapes and commercials over the past lot of weeks, and the storylines going into the show were given good time to build. You also kinda feel that WCW brought this on themselves though, the Warrior vs Hogan match was absolutely abysmal, a lot of fans didn't see DDP vs Goldberg on pay per view, Hart vs Sting was a dream match that fell flat, Nash vs Hall was ok but the circumstances surrounding the match sucked. It's a poor show and one that's difficult to recommend. Put it this way, Disco Inferno put on a better match than some of the so called featured matches, and he done it twice. I will say Halloween Havoc was better than Fall Brawl but that isn't saying much either, and as for WWF's recent Judgment Day pay per view, WCW simply couldn't compete. You'll be fairly entertained with the undercard at Halloween Havoc, the rest ranges from below average to the absolute bottom of the barrel, and on top of all this, WCW now has to explain why they couldn't book a show within their allotted time. It's bad, it's really bad. Join me on Thursday for Reliving the War and we'll see what's next for WCW and the NWO. Thanks for watching guys, you deserve a lot of credit for sticking this one out, and please take care.